the good old Grateful Dead cast, the official podcast of the Grateful Dead. I'm Rich Mahan with Jesse Jarno, exploring the music and legacy of the Grateful Dead for the committed and the curious. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow deadheads, welcome to season six of the good old Grateful Dead cast. I'm your co-host, Rich Mahan. As always, thank you for tuning in. This week, the Deadcast swaps feeds with the Comes a Time podcast hosted by Dead & Company bassist Oteil Burbridge and comedian Mike Fenoya, featuring their interview with promoter Peter Shapiro, the empresario behind Fare Thee Well and the Capitol Theater. The Deadcast will be back next week with our next episode from Season 6. Hey, bop on over to dead.net slash deadcast and check out all of our past episodes, including the complete seasons one through five. And you can link from there to all your favorite podcasting platforms so you can listen where you like to listen. Don't forget to check out the transcripts we have for many episodes of seasons one through five. Head over to dead.net slash deadcast dash index and click the transcript link on the episode you'd like to explore. Thanks to everyone who's contributed their stories at stories.dead.net. A fair amount of you made it into the podcast, so thanks very much for your input. And were you at any of the Madison Square Garden shows in 1981, 82, or 83? Well, if you were, we need your stories. Head over to stories.dead.net and record yours today. Speaking of Madison Square Garden, there's a great new Grateful Dead boxed set headed our way. In and out of the garden, Madison Square Garden, 81, 82, 83, it boasts 17 CDs from six previously unreleased concerts recorded live in New York City at the famed Madison Square Garden between 1981 and 83. Also available as a breakout show, Madison Square Garden, New York, New York, 3981, a three CD set featuring a full show from the box. Both titles are available September 23rd, and are available for pre-order now at dead.net. There's so much going on in the dead world right now. We have a new Grateful Dead server on Discord. So download the Discord app on your mobile device or computer, and then search for the public Grateful Dead server and click the join button. There's a Deadcast channel there. You can chat with fellow heads about the latest episode you just checked out. And Jesse and I pop in just about every day to see what's going on. So we'll see you over there. All of you musicians out there are going to love this one. Announcing Playing in the Band, an interactive web-based mixing board that allows you to jam with the Grateful Dead. You can mute any channel of your choice and fill in for any member of the Dead, or press the solo button on any channel to listen and learn or duet. We have five songs from the 82772 Vanita Oregon show ready for you to explore and jam along with at dead.net slash playing in the band. Even those of you that aren't musicians, I guarantee you're going to find this fascinating to hear the individual parts soloed by themselves. Check it out. Dead.net slash playing in the band. Well, today we have a very special episode for you. It's an early release interview from the Comes a Time podcast. It's an interview podcast hosted by bassist Oteil Burbridge and comedian Mike Fenoya. And many of you know Oteil as the bass player for Dead & Company, formerly with the Almond Brothers Band, the Aquarium Rescue Unit with Colonel Bruce Hampton, stellar player. Mike is a touring comedian and producer of the acclaimed television show Impractical Jokers. The name of the podcast, of course, is an homage to the Grateful Dead song of the same title. The two have a wonderful dynamic as co-hosts and dear friends, and their conversations are unique. You won't hear the same questions that interviewees have heard a thousand times, and things tend to veer in unexpected but welcome directions. Wherever it goes, they have a knack for cutting through the surface, connecting deeply with guests, and bringing light into all of our lives. In addition to the love of music, O'Teal and Mike have interests in meditation, psychedelics, spirituality, and social justice. Today's guest on Comes a Time is the one and only music entrepreneur, Peter Shapiro, a visionary of many talents. You may know him as the owner and operator of the Brooklyn Bowl venues, the legendary Capitol Theater, and the Wetlands Preserve in its day. In 2015, he produced Fare Thee Well, celebrating 50 years of the Grateful Dead at Levi's Stadium in California and Chicago's Soldier Field. Most recently, he's published a book examining his personal journey entitled... The Music Never Stops, 
what putting on 10,000 shows has taught me about life, liberty, and the pursuit of magic. Peter's a deadhead and music fan through and through, and we're so grateful for the work he's done honoring the legacy of the dead. You can find the Comes a Time podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, and also in video format on YouTube. On their feed, you can listen to past interviews with guests like Bob Weir, Paul Stamets, Bill Kreutzman, John Mayer, Mountain Girl, Billy Strings, Duncan Trussell, and some other guys you might have heard of, me and Jesse. And now, Peter Shapiro. described as do you care and i care and that's why i'm on this show comes a time here we go <laughs> i'm a sucker for o'teal man i saw that same feeling that i have that would he fill the void that i didn't even know existed it feels so good to as ben said to try to do something about an issue as opposed to complaining if you can't help don't hurt. If we could just all get out there and throw cream puffs at each other, maybe things would, instead of bullets and, and <laughs> angry mean. words, it would be better. When you stop laughing, you stop living. There's a worldwide surge in interest in mushrooms. It was deep, man. It's not that TM makes your mind quiet down there. It already is. We're just stuck up here. We've lost access. I'm jumping Jack Flash. Came out by the stones. So I thought, all right, perfect, man. I'm gonna drive, and I started driving through the neighborhood, and I got, I got a text from Mick Jagger. <laughs> People saying that you know what we do is non-essential. Well, playing those few gigs that yeah. you saw me at felt pretty essential to me. It wasn't like they were clapping from here. Is they were clapping from here. My view of things is that death, death is the last and best reward for a life well lived. Like you gotta, it's the strangest of places if you look at it right, you know? If you're liking what you're hearing, head on over to patreon.com forward slash comes a time pod and get your bus pass for an extra episode every week. Welcome back to another episode of Comes a Time. That is O'Teal. <laughs> and that... I'm guessing it's Mike. I'll cover all You're the bases. You're on top right now. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think it, Eric so is this? over here, even though okay. he's not on screen. That's what I have going <laughs> yeah. on. Well, Pete was, yeah, these blocks shift, but they're going to move. Was. So everyone's like, what the hell do they keep pointing for? Because Eric fixes it all at the end. Brady Bunch. We love the Brady Bunch. Yes. And B. Dave, she would look up. <laughs> That's right. Hey, Mike. <laughs> Hello, Teal. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Here's where I could do. Hi, <laughs> we asked I asked Mike if he could like his Lower chair has chair. this thing where you could just let it out. Here's his All story. Of a sudden, I was like, will you just let it go down? <laughs> just not when you're just no. randomly <laughs> see who the notices. The talk. Walk us through uh, what it was like to have Brooklyn Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, so who'd we have? We had the great we, Pete Shapiro on today. Yes, promoter extraordinaire, 25-year friend, God, maybe longer. Yeah. Um, wow. Started the Wetlands. He has a new book out, The Music Never Stops, What Putting on 10,000 Shows Has Taught Me About Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Magic. How could I love that title anymore? <laughs> Life, Liberty, oh. and the Pursuit of of magic the pursuit of magic is what it is though yeah, i mean it is he's what got the it is. he's got the i mean it's a lot of work i don't i envy him and i also don't because <laughs> that's a lot of look the hospitality business and that whole part of it the i dotting and t crossing and ordering kegs and holy shit i don't want anything to do with that but yeah. man just the 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 moments that he's facilitated for us, both on either side of the stage, to yeah. to enjoy and to relish <laughs> in and to I mean really it's just It's good for everybody. <laughs> it really is. And you know what's funny, man, and it's I, I wanted to like, you know, you think of something to say when we're doing these podcasts and it's like you forget because it just goes. Um I wanted to say about like 
and if he's listening, <laughs> the conta- the contagious energy, I think that yeah. flows through the venues because the staff is happy mm-hmm. that the difference in look, even doing stand up at a club where the staff is happy versus not it, it translates. I could it, tell it, if the owner is an asshole or not. Amen. Yes. And, I and, could, and you could tell reverse. I'm like, the, this owner is a really good person. Yep. Guy or girl. And you could tell that before you even meet the owner. Every single person that works there has got that heart vibe. You're like, uh, all right. Dude, yeah. from the person who meets you when you go under the awning at the cap to, you know, the bar crew at Garcia's to the security guy, to the person in coat check to, I mean, yeah. you name it. Everyone's like, he cares six inches off the ground. <laughs> They're just kind of, yeah. you know, and it's, and you could tell they all are happy to be there and they care. And that comes yeah. from the apple doesn't fall too far from the oh, tree, man. man. You know, so everything flows from the top of the mountain, whatever's at top, that water's going to be mm-hmm. like that at the bottom. <laughs> and if you go to, <laughs> you know? if you go to a venue where everybody's stiff and angry, you're you going to take, it's going to take a couple more songs for you to kind of loosen up and chill out. You know, you walk into yeah. the cap, it's like you're home somehow. Well, he was able to keep that fan perspective. Like yes. he walks into his own venue, his own show as a fan. Yeah. Still. Yeah. And so every little thing that sucks that he was at another show, I was like, well, this really sucks. I'm going to make sure I don't do that at my show. Yep. You know, you just got to be a fan. And he's, right. he's maintained that, not letting the business side just suck his soul till it was dry like he's kept it and god knows he's been through it yeah on the business side like you know you you don't get out without your scars in any business it's especially this one business and this part is war you're gonna get maimed you may get killed you're definitely gonna have your scars and he uh he's just it it's to from that first show that he saw that he had that mystical magic experience that made his life just take a left and he just kept following chasing those that magic yep. like it says in the title it's really cool really it's is. A, a super fun conversation that flew by flew by for me yeah i yeah. know for you too like uh, yeah this is that uh, yeah that's it's it's wild and and it's just you know you think about dead 50 alone that could be its own 10 part talk you know wetlands what i mean so alone oh jesus right. wetlands deserves I mean, its own podcast from- yeah i mean seriously <laughs> that's just the cat I mean, yeah At monumental brooklyn, steps brooklyn like, bowl brooklyn like, bowl or yeah. bowls you know the Vegas one is, I mean, like, yeah, Nashville. I mean, God, it's just. Yeah, so many cool experiences. So you guys yeah. will enjoy this one. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Pete, yeah. for everything. Whether, whether you know this genre of music or not, there's a lot of beautiful life stuff in here. Yeah. Um, no, absolutely. Really yes, cool. very true. From from moment one. And uh Thank you again. And thank you guys for listening. And we're here on Osiris, home to so many great podcasts. You can go to OsirisPod.com to learn more. Um, also, <laughs> also, if you like what we're... I just seen if you were paying attention. I wish uh, I could do it. <laughs> what I wanted to try to do was to... I'm trying to loosen the microphone so I could so go like, the lift this go up. Too. If I, this could go up and I could go down at the same time. So like... <laughs> I'll have the mic go the opposite. Yeah. For you only listening to audio, yeah. Yeah, we're just having fun. a chair thing that can yeah. go Thank down <laughs> and up. It's the little <laughs> things, folks. This is what you do <laughs> on Zoom. Um, we love and, you. Yeah, we love you. And come join us at patreon.com forward slash comes a time pod for many more chair tricks like that. So uh, thank you, everybody. That's Peace. for Pete. I'm leaning into everything. We have a new motto, which is six months. Six months to live. If I only had six months to live, what would I do, right? All right. You wrote me that the other day. Yeah. That's a good. Yeah. So it's like. By the way, that's good because life's hard. I won't get into it. Maybe I missed but Man, sometimes you wake up. Life's, I wake up just, it's hard. And so maybe actually the six month thing is a good way to go, but we'll talk about it.
Yeah, it's funny you say that. Though, cause, well, we we're already kind of going. We oh, this is it. Oh, that's a great yeah. start. Then right, <laughs> we don't we do intros later just so we can start. But it's funny you say that because I always think of you as like the most resilient person on earth. You and Derek Featherstone, but even you two guys, even though you're clearly wired for the crazy and curveballs. You're still a human, like everybody has limits, you know? Well, part of that is I've just been through so much. Yeah. And I've had so many of these. Um, a lot of what I do is dealing with just the problems. You know, when it's easy, when it's easy, it's easy. Right. You know, when it's going right, you don't have to fix those things. What gets to me is usually things that are going wrong, or I spot things that are going wrong. And that's how you're good at what I do, um, mm. is fixing the things that are not right to make sure it's all right. You know, and I actually have become a big believer just from doing so many shows that everything matters. Mm. Also, um, just in terms of your experience at the show, it's funny we're doing this with you guys and O'Teal, you're, you're on stage, you know, during the show, but the people who are coming, like they have a lot of points during the experience, you know, just like your jam does. Like you show up at the getting to the venue, Yes. It starts there, right? Or just yes. pointing the tickets, the friend, like one cool thing of the fair. <laughs> well, that's when that's when you're in the venue. Like I'm yeah. still outside. I'm still outside, bro. You know, get <laughs> the ticket, like yeah. and how you get in and the line, yeah. the experience yeah. being greeted at the front or not, the box mm -hmm. office, you yeah. know, proximity to food. Too. Well, that that's again, even when you're in, but what if you, you have a problem? Like if you're waiting online to get in and the security to get in, I'm talking about the difference between being wanted, you know, a hand search. And now these new machines we've leaned into that are like, you just walk through it. Like an airport. That's a better experience. You were even better than the airport, the mall, the airport, you have to yes. take things out of your pocket. You know, you got to yeah. take your wallet out, your phone out, anything else, your vaporizer, anything. You got to put it in the thing. Yeah. But now we're using machines at the Capitol or at the Brooklyn Balls, all of them, where you just walk through and you keep that stuff in your pocket. Like, nice. that's better experience. Yeah, and, yeah, um, and that matters. So then you come in and then it's like, right, then it's bathrooms, the bar line before the show started. Then it's sound, lights, crowd, sight line, all these things. And if one of those things breaks off, it doesn't go right. That can throw off, you know, throw you off. The whole experience gets thrown off. And yeah. so we try to focus on making all those parts right. And, yeah. and so, and, and, and so I just see it easily because I've been like O'Teal and I've grown up in it. So mm -hmm. I see it. In yeah, inherently, so. were you paying attention to this before your role? Like when you were a ticket holder or if you were at a concert, way back, you know, before you started like it, working in the, in the industry, did you notice that type of stuff? Like just as a fan, like, would you look at a room and go like, I like this room because of A, B and C, or I don't like this room because of X, Y, and Z, you know, did you pay attention to that stuff? Um, Was that just, pre, like, yeah. Yeah. Good question. I took over wetlands at 23. I'm 49, yeah. about 25. So I've been doing it every night for like 26, 27 years. That's right. my marker from that point on. Yes. Okay. I paid attention. But that point previously, when I went to shows, when I was in high school or college, no, you know, I okay. was just going, yeah. I was an accidental person to be sitting here with you guys. You know, I had a moment where I just went to a particular, you know, grateful. It sounds like a trite, like a movie, you know, I went to a dead show and my life changed. But my story is that I went to a dead show and my life changed, you know, in March of 93, Rosen on horizon, Ken Nordine's spoken word. I was a Northwestern film student. I never saw that. I'd seen one dead show in 92. I went in for the first, I was more into like Jane's addiction and high school and that world and Lollapalooza, not even a music head, more of a video head, went to film school, mm, but yeah. started listening a little to the dead and went to this show. They're doing spoken word with Ken Nordine and, and the effects. I think it was Dan Healy then not, our friend Derek Featherstone, but why I'm talking, you know, just, and I left the show. I swear. I don't know if you know this, but feel, I don't know without the phone, how I, I just managed to be out in the parking lot. The next thing I knew, 
fucked before the show. It was wow. just heavy for me. I swear, yeah. it was heavy. Yeah, and, a mystical um, experience. <laughs> yes, I had a, and it was snowing outside. And oh, I walked yeah. down. I was in the parking lot, and there was drum circles. And these kids were not going back to Northwestern. They were on the bus. They were literally, yeah. you know, the school buses, you, you know, and 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 I just never seen anything like that. I grew yeah. up, you know, upper middle class, middle upper upper middle class kid in New York City, private school. Like I had never seen that, you know, and I still never seen that today. <laughs> you know, I had a normal. And no, no, that's not even around. Even I mean, you get a sense that that's that's why with the fairly well going to size and what Deadco now does, playing bigger shows, shoreline parking lot, walking up to that. That's part of the experience, yeah. you know, at Alpine yeah, yeah. and. Um, Deer mm. Creek, some of these places in the camp, that whole thing. I went that night. I went back to college. I don't know how I got back. Three cell phone, <laughs> found my friends. And, <laughs> and we talk about doors, right? Where you want to be first in line to run to the rail on the GA shows. Yeah, right. 8 a.m. People are there at 10 a.m. for certain shows. I was at Doors and Library to research that next morning after the Rosemont Horizon show. Like, whoa. What has been what done? I mean, what is this? Like, what do you say? No, I'm serious. And I went yeah, on good. the road six weeks later, eight weeks later, in a van with a video camera. It was 1993. We could have a video. It was really big, the camera. I got a kid who was a film student with me who owns the camera. We rented a van. We went on summer tour to kind of capture this spirit. This is almost 30 years ago, almost 29. First of all, we rented an all white van, a Conaline Ford with no windows. And we learned pretty quickly. This is the study you learn life, just like going through it. Well, I learned that when you show up at, you know, Auburn Hills, Grateful Dead summer tour opener, and you pull into the parking lot to make your documentary, it's probably not a great idea to be in an all white van with no windows. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, DEA, DEA. And we're like, keep driving, you know. And, um, we just want to film the, you. Come back. <laughs> yeah. And then that, I make this film. By the way, the band wouldn't uh, participate. You know, there's no interviews with the band in my film. It's called The Miles to Go. It's on YouTube. But like, I got Keezy and Leary and the kids. And like, I went to like eight cities and, Larry Black, who owned Wetlands, saw the film. And that led me directly. And then I did Wetlands. And that led to the Bowl and the Capitol. And lot, everything that is for me, I believe, like a path from that parking lot and road to, to clear. If I don't have that experience, they don't do spoken word that night. I think I just watched the show and go back to Northwestern. I wasn't planning. I, I had no, the, the long answer to your question is, Pre me taking over wetlands, I had no plan mm. to be a concert promoter. Never. And this, this is the this is the theme that I, yeah, I love because in '93, I was with the Colonel, right? Which, by the way, talk about this whole 30 year thing as Matt Mundy just played with Jimmy Herring the first time since '93, right? It's just no plan. You had you just. You're like, like I texted you, I was like, you're as much of a jazz musician as Herbie Hancock. You had a mystical experience and you went, Poof. like when I met the Colonel, I was like, okay, this is, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm going to go left with this and just do this all the way. Mm -hmm. And we both ended up here. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, we, that's so yeah. weird. Yeah. And we, we, the other day we were with Phil Lesh and it was his 79th birthday and, you know, he plays a lot at the Capitol. And we're like, we, we should figure out just he's coming back again. We, how many shows he's done, you know, and, 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 yeah. we, and it was his 79th birthday was on his 79th show at the Capitol theater and wow. his birthday was at the Capitol. I'm just saying that's the, OT, you know, that's, yeah. um, the, the grateful dead and, the, yeah. Yeah, and you have to believe in that it's, it's there because that's what's, that's what we're all chasing. Or about you know is, is moments like that yeah, yeah. It's the, and the thing that's so amazing is that one spoken word moment sent you on a path that has provided so many pivotal moments to so many p people throughout the course of who has seen a show at one of the venues that it's changed their life and maybe they walked out and now they're on their path oh, to yeah, their thing, yeah. you know, and it's, it's, and the grateful music dead 50. I mean, yeah. Dude. It just provides everybody. with right, this like, Well, here's the secret. If you really want to get a little heavy, 
So the dead created this kid right from that moment. I was create, you know, and then I go to wetlands. I go do on this path. Then I go to the bowl. I do the capital. I have this relationship with each of the guys because Bobby Weir came in and did the 10th anniversary of wetlands. Mickey, I met through that. Phil and the capital. And so I've then they create this person who then becomes uniquely suited to put dead 50 together, which was kind of, because I had the relationship with Phil, particularly that helped when fairly well, the dead 50 time came and it was like, how do we put these guys back together? I was in a unique place because I owned the Capitol theater and had this relationship where Phil was coming to play. Otherwise it's hard sometimes to reach that, you know, if you can't get yep. someone to do something, if you can't reach them, yep. you know, <laughs> True. Even the dead 50 of Philly, if we can't reach, you know, but, but if the artist has to come play your venue, and that was actually, I didn't plan when I did this huge thing with Phil at the cat just felt right, but there was no, Oh, it'll be helpful when I'm trying to do dead 50, you know, and, and without wetlands, you know, without, there's no <laughs> wetlands without that Rosemont horizon. I'm serious because it leads to the movie leads to wetlands leads yep. to the Capitol, leads to dead 50. And, uh, uh, well, here's a good moment. When we did dead 50, we at the set breaks we're like we gotta do something cool and i brought justin kreutzman on board like who out you know with the films and the visuals and we asked neil casal to do the music and that's where circles around the sun's first music yeah. you know we play that because was, so we, we, we're putting together the imagery that'll go along at set break with the circles around the sun music and i tell justin that I made this film in 93 on the summer tour. The band's not in it, but I have a lot of like parking lot stuff on the outside. I never could get inside. It's all outside. And Justin's like, well, wait, you know, and, and this is the filmmaker, the great filmmaker, son of Bill Kreutzman, who's a similar age, maybe a couple years older. He's like, wait, summer 93, you know, I was way into video too. And I had a video camera. And I was, but I never went outside in the lot. I just hung out backstage, you know, with Jerry, you know, I don't blame him, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, were you a deer creek? We were at the same show. Uh. <laughs> Pete Shapiro, this is a true story. Pete Shapiro, I was outside. There were these two little video kids. Kreutzman, Justin is inside. And so when we were showing Circles Around the Sun, or that was the audio soldier field, set break, those huge screens, we yeah. were running visuals that were sort of going back and forth between my footage outside, Justin's inside, same show, particularly Deer Creek, summer 93. So isn't that cool? We were then shooting, we didn't know it, <laughs> but we were prepping the filming for the video that would be used at that day. For years death. later. That's wow. Death. That's the mystical thing. You know, I hate to hide. I want to talk about the book. Well, the book is all about the mystical thing, too. But I really want to highlight this because do you have this sense? Well, I'm pretty sure you do because you're you know about Ingo Swan and all this stuff. Yep. <laughs> like you said, if I hadn't done this and this wouldn't have done that. And, you know, when I look back on things to how I got here, like if you start there and you get to here, it seems beyond impossible but when you look back on every little thing it seems like totally orchestrated you know it's really amazing yeah, how it feels I, to I, me i'm like because i'm there with you i mean i don't know if people yeah. you know it's sliding doors a little bit that phrase i don't know if you know it which is the doors of the train and you yeah. either get on you make the train or you don't make the train and it all and yeah and it all goes from there I mean, there's a movie that is one part of the movie is if the person makes the train and the other part is if you don't make the train, wow. how your life goes, you know, there's two different life stories Yeah, yeah, yeah. that happens to each of us probably every day, you know, and I've actually tried when there's forks in the road at like difficult moments, you know, when relics, I had the opportunity to take over relics. It was, 2008 2009 like the world was falling apart then i cannot you know and magazines were closing and like but i had this amazing unique opportunity to take over rel you know and i leaned into it even though people are like what are you doing you know yeah. taking yeah. over wetlands i was 23 people are like what are you doing 
I didn't know how to run a lot, you know, but that's, you know, you just like the whole, you know, the Capitol theater, you know, had been closed for a long time. It's like when I, you know, it's in, yes, it's amazing now to look back, but it was Port Chester, New York. It's been closed. I've just chosen to lean into, you know, some of those, um, which route do you take the sliding door? You know, when I can control and it's a little risk, you know, I, I try to just lean into like, you know what? I, I should, I should be this. Uh, I also love things that are like uh, taking, there's two different ways to do a venue. One or anything, you know, is taking over an existing thing yeah. and trying to lift that wetlands was an existing thing. Larry Block had created it, but he was done and wanted yeah. to, you know, taking the baton of something relics, the Capitol theater is, is a, a certain path. And then a different path is creating something new you know, like the, the Brooklyn Bowl stuff or creating Lockin, you know, from zero, yeah. nothing, you know, O'Teal's band, I do these kids show the rock and roll playhouse. Those are things yeah. that yeah, I've created so cool. and done from nothing or a film project, you know, and then sometimes I'm taking some amazing place. I just took over in New York and I can't wait O'Teal for you to see it, but I took over the jazz standard space, which oh, is wow. a great, yeah. I'm 27, great jazz club in New York. And we we'll give it its own name, Jazzlands, like Wetlands. And I'm going to have a jazz club, by the way, for you, buddy. So cool, man. <laughs> yeah, we'll play Me and Tom you know, Warner can come in there and play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I got a jazz club for you. Um, nice. And that'll be different, right? So a part of it yeah. for me is, is um, and there's no big plan. I've never had like, oh, yeah. I want to end up with it. Like O'Teal said, I, I, I go, I just feel it out. You know, listen, fairly well was kind of supposed to be an ending mm. <laughs> and it became a new beginning. It did. It yeah. created what O'Teal's did. Yeah, it, it, it really like, was. See, so in anything, you don't really know. And so much changes so fast and opportunities come and you just kind of like, you do your best to hold on and make the best decision. We'll yeah. even take a think about like J rad, which was born out of the bowl and it was just supposed to be like, and look at the life that that took on and it's just become its own thing. And that was born out of the bowl and it was just supposed to be a quick, fun thing. And it's, you know, one of the greatest things going, you know, so that's contagious. It's like, it, it, yeah, if, Joe, that's yeah. a credit to the band, right? They mm -hmm. won that. That was, you know, and you never know when you just try something where it'll go. I'm sure when O'Teal got the first call, getting co you know maybe that's a year you know maybe it'll go on and on and life is it's yeah. hard you know Dude, when never i got really the call did. for the almond brothers <laughs> i thought it was i was like oh this stuff's melting down it'll let's right. just get a good summer out of it you know i didn't make <laughs> some bread for a summer <laughs> yeah, 17 years later <laughs> like and that to me is also like you know helping continue someone else's thing like taking a baton yeah. By the way, Same you've done that. Well, you know. no, you you you've done that well music, really well musically. Look what you've done. But you have different elements. You you doing some of that, continuing the baton, and then you've got sometimes you do the O'Teal baton, your own yeah. thing. And, uh, do some of these so kind of were, yeah. That and right there's great feeling to lifting or being a part of the baton and keeping that going. And then there's a great other feeling that is cre creating new music. You yeah. know, and, and life is a little bit of that's a great balance we're each able to have, you yes. know, but I, I'm not uh, I didn't create the Capitol Theater, you know, or, you know, I, I, I but I've tried to take it and lift it. And I try to make sure yeah. that all parts of that pie of your experience, at the cap, it's frustrating when you're like not at a show but responsible for it that, and, and things go wrong and, and you hear about it from someone who's at the show yeah. or even if you're at, and so I'm responsible. That's where that tagline on the book is. It, it, we, we figured out doing the, sh the book that I had put on 10,000 shows and like, I haven't been to every <laughs> well, one of those. Oh yeah. Did you know, I've done 10,000. So now, I'm not master. at every single one, <laughs> but if something went wrong at any of those 10,000, I get the phone call. 
So that can't really take right. me. Yeah. You know, so, something goes wrong. Yeah. So but thinking that's about part of that. Because you give a crap, you know? Right. Right. That's- so if I get the call from someone, a friend of mine, it's like, I was in Vegas, I was in Nashville, and this went wrong in my experience, right? At the box office, at the bathroom, or just doing the show, or the air. Well, it's that, and I say sorry, but I wasn't even maybe there, you know, but I'm responsible for it. It's like my team. And so that's just a whole way of living where if you're you know neurotic like i am and i think probably we all are about our individual things otl about his playing yeah. you want it all to be right right well and i'm starting to think cool. maybe we need to be neurotic a little bit you know i have a friend brian spicer he's a sound man with tedeschi trucks oh, band. Sure. He, goes, he says i'm just ocd enough for it to be useful yeah and I think, like, if we're not neurotic, we're not, like, my music is not, <laughs> like, what it is. And a little ADD, too. ADHD. Oh, a lot like, for me. And for improv, ADD is good. It's like, oh, this is cool. What about this? You know? Yeah, let it go. Leave it. Yeah. Like, I have a scene where too. people want me to hold a groove down for a long time. Get in that groove. And I love funk. I love a groove. But, man, my mind is ADDing. So I just let it go. I'm like, okay, I did that for 32 bars. Let me switch it to this. I'll hold it. And then I switch and let my ADD build this. You know, it's like, let's use these things that are bad. It's like, are they really? Only if, or maybe if they just get too unbalanced and out of hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I definitely think it's a, um, it's a tool. You know, and if you can play yeah. it, it's an instrument, AD, you know, the ADHD. Yes, yes. If you That's can great. figure out a life that leverage, you know, like what you have with your <laughs> instrument and a bit, I'm playing an instrument doing what I do. There's no question that I've been able to do what I do with so many different kind of businesses because my brain goes there natural all over. The place. Have you found that in that whole passing the baton, um, you know, theme, have you found like younger or like entrepreneurial folks, like coming to you kind of from a starting a business or running a venue standpoint, like asking you for advice or like a mentorship in any way? Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely, well, two things. One, I stepped into a unique, luckily I spotted it. Like part of the sliding doors life is also like knowing when you get on the get train, on the train and the door on the left. <laughs> yeah. Or not. <laughs> I didn't even that wetlands yeah. thing. You know, that doesn't come around a lot. I, I would say that you can put on a lot of what it takes to do fairly well is also true at a show with a hundred people. Whether mm-hmm. it's a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, fifty thousand, you have to book a venue or you have to book a band and book a band, you know, and then uh, put the show on sale and announce the show and market the show and then do the show, you know, with uh, the box office and the venue and the experience for the customer being positive. Like we talked about all the parts and that's true at a hundred or 50,000. They're both true. Mm-hmm. So at anyone out there who's in call, I did my first one at Houston street block party, you know, it's a great time to start, you know, in college, whether you're in Lawrence, Kansas or Boston or say any uh, city gains, you can, I think you can get a lot of value out just renting a local bar, having your local friend, you know, cover band or band play. And you, because the way to really learn how to do it is by doing it. Right. The way That's, to really learn to be a great musician is by playing. Yeah. You know, we talk, so yeah, just, uh, yeah, just get up and bomb until you learn how to That's, be funny. <laughs> That's basically it's just getting reps, right? Isn't it like doing it? And now <laughs> yeah. I can feel it. It's part of my instincts. Like when I go into it, just because I've done it a lot. And I think people can go, by the way, pay attention when you're at the show. Like we talked about the things yeah. you see that you like, that you don't like the little things will matter. Like it fairly well. One of the best things we did was to put the security staff at soldier field in, in tie dyed shirts. Huh. They still have the number there for sure. Yeah, yeah we had all the security work. Now that mm. actually changed the vibe of the room, or yeah. added, added a touch of uplifting vibe versus big security shirt tie dye. We got it. We got Brilliant. them to do it, and that nice. changed. I don't know if um, at Brooklyn Bowl it always says "Welcome" on the back of the shirt of the security, not security or staff and <laughs> little like things it's great like, yeah, little things like that it's a jedi a good trend. Run. yeah jedi stuff is like here's running that anyone can afford listening or watching you know anyone 
yeah. and this was a challenge. The first year I took over wetlands, um, like 96, that holiday, or 97, that, that Chris, we, we had Christmas lights behind the bar for the holiday. And then I came in uh, probably in January, a few days after New Year's, and the Christmas lights were down. And it was incredible to see the difference in energy yeah. that was the energy that was lost with the Christmas lights gone. You know, all the colors, just by, just that simple hanging Christmas lights lifted yeah. the room, the whole energy. We took them down. It was just darker. I was like, we, we should, we got to put the Christmas lights back. And if you notice at any broken bowl, anywhere in my venue, we, we, they, the, there's always those Christmas lights now at the bar. Always. So By the cool. way, anyone, those, you can go to Walmart or Target yep. or wherever <laughs> or online, wherever you want to. That is here. like, do you, it's 50 bucks for the whole bar. Yeah. 50 bucks yeah. for the whole bar. And that ha- will add a dimension. Like what has got it. Like that's how you can do something simple that has a lot of impact. Yeah. Some recording yeah. studios I know, like people's homes, so they uh, have those Christmas lights or the the red pepper, the hot pepper lights. And you know, yeah. sometimes they go, but it just adds a it adds a thing to it. But you know, I remember talking to Bert Holman, the manager of the Almond Brothers, going back to what you were saying about the size it being the same for a hundred thousand ten thousand fifty thousand he started Bert, i asked him how'd you get started booking the almond brothers he said when i was in college i think he was at american university in dc and there was a, basically a job for someone to like do the music <clears throat> and he was like you know i'll do it they're like all right you're up you know so he's like great i got this budget i got a play i got a venue i got all these things I'm going to bring the Allman Brothers band. So, and they were cheap back then. Yeah. Right. So he brought in his favorite. He brought the almonds and, and he, and it's the same thing you said doing it, what back then was definitely a, a much littler show. All the pieces were in place. And so when it came time to manage the Allman Brothers, he's like, I've been doing it since college. Yeah. And you just scale, you just move the scale. Yeah. I mean, it's he did work bigger. for John Sher in between, but you know, it started, <laughs> That's right. My, I was uh, at Northwestern. I did the concert committee. Same thing. Concert and committee. That's my, it. Yeah, the, the cards. And anyone that's, you know, I encourage that. College is a great time when you're in school. Let's just say a great time. Like I, some kids will say, I'm going to quit school. I just want to do this. I want to play. You know, I always say, stay in school and do this on the side. Mm-hmm. You know, whatever, whether it's the playing, yeah. whether it's that you want to produce, promote, like, or keep your day job. Right. You know, and, and I, or live at home. Like I chose after college, I felt, you know, when I took over wetlands at first, I, I, I did, and I did these, I was doing an internship to learn, you know, at a rate, you know, at WNYC and then did New Line Cinema. And I stayed at home after college. I lived in my old room just because that bought me more time to get to do that kind of stuff and learn versus yeah, if I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I need my own apartment, but then you got to make money. You know, yeah. and you have to bar. So everyone has to make the right decision for themselves. But I encourage young people, like, if you can stay at home for a little while and you're not like, I, you know, at least this is one person's opinion is do that because then you don't have to pay the rent. It's just easier yeah. for you yeah. then to spend some time putting on a concert or becoming a yeah. musician or this, or if you have a day job, keep the day job and do this on the side for as long, you know, it just takes pressure away versus, yeah. I got I want to be a musician, but I just quit my job and I'm going on tour and I have to make, you know, so it, as much I as you can do that myself. I think that that's yeah. such a giant point that I wish I've been thinking about like notes to a younger me Remember, Otil, we were talking about that. Mm-hmm. Like just if I could go back and, you know, patience is something that I don't think we me were too. really taught. It was like, grow up as fast as possible. Like get out, go do your thing. Like I never really like, had you couldn't to th- tell me anything either. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. So it was just this kind of like hurry up and just get out and start <laughs> yeah, your thing like- and be your, you know, and, uh, keeping the day job and stuff, you know, it's funny, like with stand up, you kind of like hear this thing, like, when did you start doing it full time? Which means when did you stop doing a day job and make your night yeah. gig pet, you know, yeah. and, and, and 
you know, all of us for the first eight, 10 years or whatever, you'd get whatever job you can get work from home or whatever you want to call it to to give you the freedom to follow your night dream and stuff like that. But it's harder than when you're working, you have to show up and rub last night out of your eyes kind of, and keep this gig so you can feed the night beast a little bit, you know, and that's something that uh, those are the valuable lessons that when it's It's hard being a human's hard. Being a human back to the neurotic if you're good at what we all want to try to do comedy music promoting you know your neurotic you know that that add is good we figured out being neurotic (laughs) and just waking up i'm like i still am like i I, because right back to like if everything matters the d if all the details matter yeah. And back to play, like, you know, how you, if you're off on a note, it matters. Like if the bathroom lights off, it matters. So if all the details yeah. matter, which we all yeah. agree they do, then it never can be just easy because it you got to manage all the, d- it can but get easier. Well as- but <laughs> and it's so funny to think about the world we come from that like imperfect is perfect. You know what I mean? Like the dead never went out to play the same exact perfect every night like it was okay that there's mistakes but, but that's there was what i was the- gonna say before it's like our our whole culture is like counter to this dead thing <laughs> so like we've we enjoy our lives i don't even want to say success or anything because we're like okay well when someone goes what the hell are you doing then that's almost like a signal for us like ah I'm a, maybe i'm on the right track here you know, because it's just like opposite world. Yeah, I, <laughs> no, I mean, that's the music. That's why we're friends. You know, exactly. we like a similar. To, honestly, like, yeah. the island no, of there's, there's, toys, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, and that's what that's what we were all. That's why the dead. You know, it didn't always work. You've been up there, and you know when it's not working, and then when it kicks in, you can it's feel that energy off the crowd when it's working. They kick it back to you, yeah. so you, you feel it, yeah, and then you're kicking it, just, it back to them. Right, I think I sent you that picture. I where well, I like being in the back. That night, I left the show in '93 at Rosebud Horizon. I think before I went into the parking lot, I walked the arena and went up. To, I like going to the very top back. I like that because you can feel the energy. And though, till I, I was at Wrigley Field for Dead Co and went up and got a nice picture. I think I. Um, yeah. when, and I've been at shows, and, um, and you know who's amazing at this? Really, uh, you can see the energy of the musicianship come off the guitar into the crowd and back to him. And sometimes I see it is Trey from oh, yeah. he leans into the audience. Yep. He's at the le- ledge yep. and you can see him. He holds you sometimes. See him you know, yeah. You see this. So like, he's kicking it out to the crowd. And if you're up high enough, I swear, I believe that. And, and you see the energy. I can see the circle. Yep. Maybe it helps wherever your headspace is, but you can see the energy coming off of him into the crowd and back to him. Yes, yeah. there's no and then difference. He's taking it back. Yeah, that's no yeah. difference between him and Professor Dumbledore in Harry Potter. Yeah, I saw it one night when I was tripping really hard at Fenway, second night of Fenway, and I would play and I would just. I would lean into it and I swear, you know, cause I thought I was tripping that I could see it go and do what you're talking about all the way yeah. back and come back. Yeah. And I was like, Whoa. So then I started toying with it and, uh, and it happened every time. And I was wow. like, this is crazy. But the first thing that happened was I was, I had my eyes closed and I could feel everybody in the band. Like I had was an octopus and I had a tentacle touching each person i was like wow this is Whoa. cool and then all of a sudden i was like wow something else here like really huge who am i and i reached out towards all in my mind i reached out to our audience and i opened my eyes and and i went it's them and this dude looked at me and he was like yeah like i swear he knew and then i went wow. and the whole thing went like that and i just looked at my wife like this is I know, I so like we're talking about the same thing. Yeah, we're, yeah, I'm just talking about being from the audience to see that. I mean, yeah. this is different points of are great. Back there. If you're up high a bit, you and you were looking down, you could probably see the energy field come off if you, if you were in the right yeah. headspace linked into you. You could see the energy coming off your bait and then seeing the whoosh. You know, uh, I bet if you're up there, you would see that. Yeah, I'm not yeah. I believe that. You no, know, 100%. I've yeah. seen and. Um, yeah. That's that's 
we need that. And I think you need that stuff today more than ever because the world's yeah. so crazy. When you magic. So, it's, yeah. Otherwise, the day to day, you know, you need those moments. By the way, I get tired of doing what I'm doing. Like the daytime part's yeah. not that fun. Dealing with the problem, you know. They, you know, but then you go to a show. Yeah. You know, and it works for me. It's like Colonel Bruce maybe touched me because it works every time pretty yeah. much going to see live you you know good i get re-energized yeah from the show and then i'm like it's back to a circle like okay now i'm ready to go back during the day and I deal with the tough again. part the ba- yeah i can take it again the, and, and i actually <laughs> have a chapter me. in the book um called 72 hours or something and and a nod to dean budnick who, who helped me you know write all this who wrote it he, I, that live show energy lasts for me about 72 hours where then I'm, mm-hmm. I can do it again. I'm pushing there and it to go, but it'll fade off. I'll need it again. I need that fix. I'm yeah, like your an spirit addict. battery needs a charge. Yeah. Yes. By the yeah. way. Yes, I do. It lasts, you know, it's, a, it's amazing after an amazing night. Oh, till like you wake up the next morning, you glow. know, and you, you have a glow. Yeah. You yeah. feel great. But a few days later, you're like back, I need that to get through the hard, long, slogging yeah. day. That's why and, people um, go back to church on Sunday because it wears off. You get the music recharge. Yeah. You get, you know, it's like we need that. We need the refreshing. It's just like drinking water. You know, you yeah. can't drink water once and you're good for the rest of your life. <laughs> well, that's one of the things that we're so for, for those of us that go I to concerts. Drink the water right for those of us that go to concerts that need that recharge, I think that's yeah. what you know, COVID was hard enough, mm. but then to not be it. able to, you know, that was our community. That was our church. That was our going to the, mm-hmm. you know, no matter what it was, like not being able to do that for two years is like, what the, f- like, what do I do? Like, how do I thank God for the fact that we can like go it's and like listen a, to live shows like or sit six feet apart in the backyard for a year and a half. But man, it was just, that, yeah. that part was just to not be able to go to a concert. J rat at Westville was the first thing I saw after. And I was just crying, man. It was just like, everyone was looking at it. It it was pouring rain and it was just like, man, thank God we're able to do this again. Cause that was just, I think I may have been at that. Um, I have a good church story. Cause I saw it firsthand just how these venues sometimes certain, you know, they've got, you know, certain venues are temples. Churches, yeah. temples, um, Tipitinas. So away, yeah. <laughs> the tips of the world's are temples because you know, well, you can't just have a brand new room or a hotel bar. You like you know the difference between a room that's done the ten thousand shows. The air is different, <laughs> right? In a room, it is the Very air is tips. It makes it easier for an O'Teal to come in and get to magic. I believe mm-hmm. if there's get, been get magic to, in the room before, for sure, for sure. Okay, so wetlands. Like we went on a weekend. This is back in the nineties, like have Saturday day would be a ska show. And we'd have seven, eight hundred kids come in with the dress of a ska kid, the white shirts, yeah. you know, the black suspenders. And then Friday, uh, Saturday night, maybe we'd do a jam, um, you know, our, our world grateful dead jam world, two sets, Mo would play or something, you know, and you'd see people coming in to get to the, in the same building on the same day in the same church, just seeking the same divine magic feeling from their religion. The religion was just slightly different. The pastor was slightly <laughs> different. That yeah, was ska in the day, jam at night. Now the next morning, Sunday morning, agnostic front, hardcore. Same the 800 kids come in. They just look different, you know? And then that night we'd have the roots. We did a residency on Sunday nights with the roots way back in black Lily with all black women singing, but the roots were the band. So we'd have four shows on Saturday and Sunday in like 36 hours all. So you could really see each one yeah. of those shows the, the, at the most show, the kids all look like, you know, the people, you know, at a dead show, you know, and, and that has a look right. And the hip hop kids, you know, had its own look. And, but they're all seeking the same thing. Yeah. And in the same place, (laughs) it was amazing. You could see them come in and out and just the new people showing up would just be dressed the same, look a little the same. I swear the same uniform, but 
that new, they were seeking to get to the same place, seeking that um, spirituality. And it was cool because you could, we definitely were like, this is a temple. Yeah, this absolutely. is a church. It is, man. And it, it was. You know, it's funny, Eric, our, our producer reminded me right before we did this, that it's the anniversary of Clifford Ball today and, you know, Fish's first festival. And I was 16 going to that. And that was a life changer wow. where it was like, sure. I 16. could see... You know, we drive up to the middle of nowhere and I get out and there's me and my four buddies. So the five of us and I'm what like, is it, oh, 25 years, is it 25 years? 96. Be, right? So is it 26 yeah. years? 20, okay. yeah, 25, 26 years. Yeah. But I'm like looking and I'm like, oh, wow, that's the Syracuse version of us. Or that's the Boston version of it. That's the, so there's a whole bunch of us. Like, it's not just us. Like, cause mm-hmm. you know, your four walls when you're 16, you know, your town, you know, your, you know, but then you get up here and you're like this band turned this air, like air force base into like Narnia for, I mean, literally transformed like it. Yeah. transformed it. And for three, yeah. it was like, I mm-hmm. left there look, always chasing that spiritual, like you're talking about Pete, where it's like that I, I, they gave me the realization like, Oh shit, this exists. Like my happiness is a place where I can go be just blown away by incredible music, by people who give a shit about the details. And that made it just so incredible. Like from that point on, it was like, all right, now I know what I'm looking for, (laughs) you know? Yeah. That's where the intention comes into, you know, Colonel always talked about intention, like the intention, Pete, that you care, that you still come to the show with the glasses of a fan on. Right. And and even if it's not perfect, because your intention is for it to be perfect, people can feel that. Yep. So that's what I go to now. Yeah, I'm like, good, okay, yeah. it cannot be perfect. Let me just have my intention just be full that, you know. Yeah. That's a good, you speak like a great parent, right? It's kind of like, uh, it's beyond music. It's just about how to live your life. You know, right. that's a really good point. way you just said that, you know, it's a, if your intention is right. And this is, again, so relevant right now when you look out at what's going on in the world. And what we see, by the way, some of what I've done and the way fairly well got, you know, I don't know if you could do it today the same way, just because it's the stuff in the world. It was 2015. It was pre Trump and the world's different now, I think. And pre COVID yeah. pre, by the way, you didn't have all the TikTok. I mean, it was starting to be internet when yeah. we started Brooklyn Bowl in 09 and like there was just less, you couldn't stay at home and just watch streaming that didn't exist. Yeah. No, yeah. you know, there Clifford was no, ball, no cell snap. phones. We had pull- no, and I went for a day of <laughs> ball, by the way. I was good. By the way, credit to those guys. You talked about like taking good mm-hmm. energy and doing it a hundred people, a thousand fifty. I mean, mm-hmm. they skipped the line and went to so big. They and did it. We're holding it. You know, it's risky. They did it. And um, you're right. But if you keep your intention positive um, in whatever you do, um, that's that's the most important thing. And then just a, there's a great quote from Gary Players, a famous go, legendary golf player. He goes, you know, it's funny. The more I practice, the luckier I seem to get. <laughs> that's awesome. And it, and that's it's, awesome. You know, so it's kind of similar to like try to be a good person and just yeah. do the right thing and hold and and eventually, hopefully, if you pay it forward enough. You know, you might get a shot at dead, and, but you have to try. Like I tried for dead yeah. forty, I didn't get it, but yeah. I came back. And and I say something that's in the, the the book. A lot of no's can be good. You know, to get to a yes, you sometimes need no's first. Oh God, yeah. I don't know why, but sometimes when a closed door, we should just accept it. Like you say, you wanted to do Grateful Dead forty. Yeah, but something took. It's like a plant. It does. You can't force it to sprout. And it took yeah. those 10 years. And and maybe you can look back and say, thank God, because Grateful Dead 50, dude, rainbow and all. That was just you yeah. sewed that thing up with a bow. It was like, what? Yeah. yeah. It's just. Thank God. I, I'm lucky because I knew going into Dead 50. Um, it's kind of like fish going in for Clifford Ball. You just the scale so big. Another thing I've learned is like what's scary about these things is you, you, you only get one shot, right? If something had gone wrong at Clifford ball or dead 50, like once the weekend's over, like you can't go back and fix it. 
yeah. you know, someone's memory is, and that's one nice thing. Like after a great show, the, the nice feeling, even the night of, like when people go home and they just hope yeah. everyone goes home sick, it's like, that's in the books. Like the people will always remember that night as being yeah. incredible, special. Nothing can change it. Like you remember that change. night that got you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That and <laughs> nights we've done, let's say, an O'Teal and Friends show at the cat. It's like that magic show, like people that you can't change it. So by going into Dead 50, it's like if something had gone wrong, you know, there was a storm that came on July 6th, that Monday after the three day weekend at Soldier Field in Chicago. It, there was lightning and rain. And I remember talking to Mountain Girl and she said, yeah, that's Jerry's crying tears of joy and uh which was intense to hear from oh, but wow. i also yeah. knew if that rain from monday had been just the night before the last yeah. night and if you and you've been there O'Teal, like and you guys yeah. know when there's lightning or this and you have to pause the show or leave you've had that happen like that would have been a different experience for people right if they're in yeah. the rainbow of course have but if that but <laughs> even just the weather i believe in chicago i'm not kidding Weather, yeah. that is a big difference because if you have perfect weather, which we had, you know, everything goes right a lot of times because those those details waiting online a little or going through security, waiting for a meal. But if it's 75 degrees, no humidity, you're happy waiting online. No problem. Hell yeah. The loading guys, the union, yeah. the stage hands, they're all in a good mood. You know, AJ's Everyone's in a good mood. And... So like, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a good one, right? You just go on the AJ barometer. Which, and, but if it's 100 degrees humid or raining, you know, the grumpy, things get delayed. It gets harder. Everything gets harder. It's like you dominoes. Know, it, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, so you know I'm so just... thankful back to, I really think of it, like, I believe the weather made a difference. You, that, mm. so, so Soldier Field, that's such a that huge venue. You, it somehow had a feeling of a smaller. I got to show you, we have to interrupt one thing. Simon. Oh no, put the helmet. You can show him. Come on, we'll get that helmet back on. He just, <laughs> this is makes a good goalie. Huh? Watch this. This kid, 12 years old back from camp, put it on. Show him what you're doing to go. He's going to play some goalie in the house. Wow. We got a goalie vote. Nice, pretty cool. man. Yeah. Yeah. Go lower. Show me your design. Right on. Look at that design. Oh, 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 killer. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I like it. <laughs> Walking into Soldier Field for Dead 50, too, and it was like the th about the small details and the stuff that was so neat about it. Like when you walked right in and you got to the landing, there were those massive picture of Jerry surrounded by roses and it became this yeah. thing where everybody kind of met and took pictures at in front of and we were running into people that we didn't even know were there because of it so it kind of became this sort of like meeting point or like a beacon or something we were like oh damn this yeah. is the coolest thing in the world like it didn't have to be there but it was like such an, a perfect detail that it just well, kind of about, yeah you got it set we've talked about this magic stuff but and that's why that quote, you have to set it up right, right yeah. for magic yeah. to increase the chances for magic to happen. Yeah. You know, there's no yeah. rainbow if you're not in Santa Clara doing the show. Like, and <laughs> when you do it, oh, you, you need to try to do as much as you can control. You can't control everything. Yeah. And if you can't control something that goes wrong, you got to fix it back to that. But yeah. you want to increase, like we gave a rose to everyone who walked in. Like yeah. we put so the great. security guys in the tie dyed shirts, you know, you do the Christmas lights behind the bar to elevate the energy, you know, yeah. and you just try to put as much in place. You know, you need to do the giant frame cherry with row and spend the money, by the way, to do something, things better cost more. Sure. Right. Yeah. Hotel knows about that. Like suddenly you're playing gigs, you want an extra sound this or lighting or to bring your oh, lighting yeah. guy costs more your sounding guy then you got to fly him in versus we can use the house guy you know or let's add horns that's more you know it's yeah. it's so what's ironic about business and stuff a it's harder when you're small and you're alone yeah. versus yeah. now maybe i have nashville venue or vegas you could say to someone you want to play there too you know um it gets easier not easy and and to do it better, you usually cost more. Yeah. And sometimes what's good for me is I've able to, I've made, I always do, by the way, I just, that's me. Cause I'm a fan. I always want it to be better and I'll choose as much as I can. I'll spend more and make less because 
it just feels to me like that, that I ha- that's the right way to do it, you know, and hopefully paying it for it'll come back around later. And, uh, but there is, but it's hard because it's maddening for no your way. accountant, isn't it? <laughs> like, they don't like, really? no, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's it's to, to take off, to not do the huge frame Jerry, to not like have, spend extra on the tie dye shirts well, for the security guys. The roses, and, yeah. yeah. The and, roses. And hearing, that, that's costless. Well, and hearing you now talk, like that's probably the one thing that you would leave thinking about. You would see what wasn't there. Like you'd walk away going, it was awesome, but we should have did that Jerry picture. Or we should have did the yeah. roses or we should have did the tie dye shirts, you know? And like, that's where that positive neuroticism or whatever maybe comes into play. Yeah. Like, I don't watch. <laughs> yeah. I don't watch a lot of TV. I mean, some because like these series to jump into takes your brain space for me, at least to watch, like to me enjoy that. I like going to the movie theater and like popcorn and like, I need, because if I'm at home, my brain's going. I wrote right. this in my Netflix. Netflix is like in my head when I get <laughs> yeah. home because during the day I'm like doing, fixing, you know, dealing with shit. And then I need to dream, you know, like yeah. my time to like figure things out. I need to like lie in my bed and look at the ceiling. Like, but I can't be watching like, you know, the crown or some TV show, you know, because I could be, but my brain started back to the ADD, you know? So yeah. I, I like sitting back and relaxing but I'm still dreaming a lot and um, because I need to think through or dreaming or like figuring out like, should we do this or should we do that? And if we do that and and there's so much to figure out, you know, doing so many shows every day. Well, don't stop, please. (laughs) Yeah. Cancel your Netflix now. (laughs) We need more bowls. (laughs) It's so great. I believe that. Yeah. There's, you know, the, even the, hopefully people can spend more time in their own head. In our, in the I don't right watch way. Netflix for the same reason. Like me and my wife, before we had kids, we had series and we had binge watch even sometimes. And now I'm like, I don't have the space in my brain to get engaged. It's all going to the kids and yeah. the multiple yeah. things happening career wise. Yeah. yeah. And the damn country. <laughs> You know, it's like, oh my yeah. God, I'm just trying to like get my love light, like ramped up brighter and brighter. It takes all I've got. I don't have time to watch Handmaid's Tale. I can watch it happen live. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, too much. I think the Colonel would, would give you the same advice. Oh, absolutely. And you know, I... We don't want to keep you too long, but thank you for being with us and taking an hour out thank of your you. time. But this is amazing. But, um, you know, everything the Colonel was trying to teach me about music, I realized he was trying to teach me about life. He was using music as a metaphor to get me to figure. And now that I'm older, I see it all. And I'm like, oh, uh, and it's great because it's it does come down to that. It's about life. You know, music is magic, but we're magic. You know, this guitar doesn't do anything by itself. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's all our intention. So uh, I'm I'm glad that I'm glad we have him in common. Let's put it that way. Yeah. You know? um, it's a hell of a bond. <laughs> I. Uh, just his story is incredible. And, and the ending is, you know, you could, obviously you, yeah, you it's unbelievable. believe it. Yeah. It's, we do share like his ending, my beginning, being in a dead, sh- you know, but I, I, I know it's true. No one else could know. Like I know that if I hadn't had that moment at that show at Rosemont horizon 30 years ago, I don't think I'm here talking to you guys for sure. Sh- I don't, I just wasn't I don't think planning. I would have got the dead and company gig or the almond brothers gig. Honestly, I mean, the train door. <laughs> yeah, slightly, yeah, which is a great, by the way, it's a great way to live life because once you're on and also you make the train door, then you look for the net. You just try to make the best decisions and lean in when it's, you feel like it's the right move. Lean back if you think that's the right move. And just do your best to ride it. You know, everyone's life has a bit of that jam. And that is like jazz and figuring out you can, you know, what, what, uh, the music does on stage, you can live your life that way. I do see myself maneuvering through, you know, different types of songs and different moments in songs 
and different tempos and sometimes it slows down sometimes it goes faster and and when to go to the next song and when to stay in the song and jam longer you know i try to i guess i really do try to do it that way you know i hope uh, our society can embrace that more because i feel like it doesn't teach us to improvise it doesn't teach us you know it teaches us to do this and get to here and everything that way you can be in control and it's like Mm. We're never really in control. Maybe we should teach our kids to improvise, teach our kids to set their intention and then just, you know, I don't know. So you've obviously uh, had a huge effect on people to yeah. encourage them to do that and keep that philosophy, that way of living alive. So thank yeah. you for that. And thank you for being, you know, I always say, oh man, I, I missed everything. When I look back at the sixties, I didn't see Dwayne. I didn't see all this stuff. And I, we, I wish I could have met Bill Graham. And it's like, you know what? You're my Bill Graham. You know, Bill Graham is Bill and Bobby's Bill Graham, <laughs> you know, I mean, he's the world's Bill Graham and you're the world's Peter Shapiro. But for me, that's like, I don't feel like I missed out. It's like, wow, thank you. Wow. This, yeah. this story happened. I was a part of it and didn't even really realize it. Now till I look back on it, reading your book is such a trip. So thank you, man, for believing <laughs> in us back then. Cause man, without wetlands, I don't know where it's ARU. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have a photo of me, like, but see, we've been doing things 25 years together. Yeah. And um, I'm so for By the way, thank you. Those words make me want to keep going, you know, so oh, thank man. you, you know. Yeah, and well. um, it's, you know, we're very fortunate to get to do this together. Yeah. And I'm so glad I get, you know, to meet you, your brother, you yeah. know, your kid, you know, your, you do the whole, that, that makes this all, you know, this is the, this is why we do it. This you know what you just said. Thank you. And then the moments and the man, and I'm glad you guys are doing this stuff. I'm glad I wrote these stories. You know, it was awkward for me to like do the book, but Dean Budnick's credit to him. He said, do you, have you ever written anything down? Like the stuff we're talking about? I was like, no. <laughs> and uh, he really, uh, I didn't want to pass up. Right. It's back to sliding. Nope. Like I got a guy who's like, the best guy at writing this stuff and he's been in half the stuff and he knows it all. Like, yeah. and I didn't, I to pass that up and also doing it while I still remember it. Mm. I'm not kidding. Yes. Like I barely, I can barely remember <laughs> it now. If I had waited 20, 30 years, I'm not kidding. I'm so, I was hesitant to do this and it's not my life. It's just the story of 50 shows. But if I had waited, I definitely wouldn't have remembered like, a lot of this stuff and well, you've uh, packed yeah. a ton of life I, into those years, man. You know, <laughs> yeah, well, sure I know sometimes I'm like, I, I'm tired, but then you hear O'Teal say that and I'm like, you know, let's go book some shows. <laughs> well, let me, oh, let me do. end with showing people this. Well, I'll, I'll send it to Eric, but this picture right here, it's you, yeah, it's me great. and, and Derek trucks and Eric Krasno at the wetlands. And boy, do we all look young. Yeah, Holy that's 25 crap. years ago. Wow. Dude. And yeah. to think, like, when I opened that, you know, of course, I I started the thing and then I went to the pictures, you know, I looked in here and I was like, wow. Wow. The time flew by. So nice. Yeah. Thank you, man. What a what a great. I'm glad I lived long enough. <laughs> yeah, to have this I'm glad day. we both we, we were um, for two guys who've been doing that for a long time. Um, the meet the rock and roll thing. Yeah. We, um, you know, and there's a call right is um, <laughs> there's that magic you know cut right when I say oh we're looking okay the the, the colonel says Boo, I'm going to take your picture out. Um, <laughs> But uh, I know, actually, I've learned, you get too up, like people say about the dead, fifth, like the moment you get too up, that's when you know you'll get hit by light perhaps <laughs> in the street. So I try not to, but but I am hell glad, you know, the, the health, you, whatever. We just keep going. Yeah. We can't yeah, think man. about it too much. That's and, right. Um, <laughs> I'm psyched to be doing this with you guys. And Mike, thanks for doing this with O'Teal. Of course, um, it's an honor. And, and having me on and... Uh, I want to go book some shows now. Absolutely. Do it. Go forth. <laughs> thank See you for being man, on and thank you time, for, brother. Yeah. Thank you for everything that you do for us. Thanks, guys. I'll see you at a show soon. Okay, thanks, thanks, guys. Peace. Peace out.
Hey folks, thanks for listening to this special episode of Comes a Time. If you enjoyed this conversation, you can find so many more on the Comes a Time podcast that you'll love. Search for them on your favorite podcatcher or on YouTube. Well, the Deadcast will be back next week with our next episode from Season 6, so make sure to subscribe to us wherever you like to listen to your podcasts. Keep in touch with us by signing up for the official Grateful Dead email list at dead.net, and please keep those stories coming, especially any about Madison Square Garden in 81, 82, or 83 by recording yours at stories.dead.net. And don't forget to check out dead.net slash playing in the band. Jam on. Executive producers for the good old Grateful Dead cast, Mark Pincus and Doran Tyson. Produced for Rhino Entertainment by Rich Mahan Productions and Jesse Jarno. Special thanks to David Lemieux. All rights reserved.